back. Uh, this tutorial video is going to go into the uh, MCDU, um, basic operations of the MCDU, getting it all set up for our flight. Uh, we're going to fly from Milwaukee to Chicago O'Hare. Um, it uh, should be a relatively short flight, so we're going to run this one just because it uh, is so short. We can get things done live in there. Um, I did not prepare a flight release. I know we need somewhere around 6,600 pounds of fuel. The aircraft burns around 2,000 pounds per hour at cruise. So 6,600 uh, pounds of fuel should be more than enough to get us down to Milwaukee. Um, so let's go through some of the pages in the MCDU. We've got our radio page. This really is one of the nicest features on board the uh, Embraer uh, E-Jets family. Here's our transponder modes. So above here, this is now properly modeled in the aircraft. You can select TARA, TA only, T or ALT ON or ALT OFF. We're going to leave it in ALT ON uh, for ground ops and keep it in standby. Now back to what I was discussing with the radio. One of the best features of the aircraft is that you can type in shorthand radio frequencies and put them up in there. Uh, when you're lazy on a long flight and they tell you to contact center on 134.6, you just put it in there. No decimals, no nothing. Uh, so, awesome feature on the aircraft. Now, when we come on board, the first thing we're going to do is hit our flight plan page, and this brings us to our position in it. No present position, that would make sense, we haven't done it yet. So we're going to load number three, our GPS position. Um, which should be relatively consistent with their airport reference, but the airport reference is a, a point on the airport somewhere, not necessarily where we are. So we're going to put that in there and then go to our flight plan, and now we should have an origin and a blank destination. As discussed, we're flying to Chicago over here. Uh, so we're going to put that into the destination column, and then we're going to close the flight plan. And what I mean by closing the flight plan is uh, connecting the, the waypoints uh, with an end point on the flight plan. If we just put all the, the route points in there, we won't have an endpoint, and it won't calculate any of our performance climb data. So we're going to take our destination and put it here into the 2L on the uh, FMC. You'll notice on your PFD or your MFD now we've got a line uh, draw, and we can activate it. Now that gives us a straight line between Milwaukee and Chicago for us to start programming. It. And as we said, 58 miles, very short flight. Uh, so we're going to go to the departure page first, and uh, I guess we'll use one left those said, insert, activate, nothing really changes out of that, uh, except our origin now is now one left. First fix is going to be Zandy, so we'll type that in there, here, and we're going to go direct there, and then uh, the Matty 4 arrival. When we program our arrival, we typically do not put the runway in until we have a it's at my company, that, that really depends on who you're flying for, what you're doing. On a flight like this, if we had just come from Chicago, we probably would, just to be a little bit lazy, but um, we're going to leave the aircraft just like this. Uh, so this is our route. All done. We, should, we see it's closed out, and there's an ending point for it. And uh, if we check our plan page, we can kind of see how the points are looking uh, along there to ensure that those are all set up. So the route setup is very, very easy on the Embraer. Um, it's just a little different than what you're used to. If you're going to do an airway, um, you would type in the uh, the airway, so let's say we were going to fly on Jet 34 to Bel Air. So we have our airway and our endpoint, and we put it into the uh, one of the line select keys uh, below our previous point. Uh, but we're not flying on an airway today on this short flight, so we're not going to need to do that. Um, we can make up different points as well, and we'll get into some of that stuff uh, a little bit later on in the flight. Uh, now let's move into the perfect This is really where people have... Uh, a little bit of difficulty with the airplane because it is different than what they're used to. Um, we have the options here of a climb, a cruise, and a descent mode, or descent speeds and profiles. So for this flight we're going to use cruise 290. Um, if we wanted a Mach number we could put a Mach number in there, so if we wanted to do 290 or 80 we can do that. Um, it's not going to let me without putting the cruise number in there, but we're not going to get high enough so we're not going to worry about it. Um, one of my favorite features on board the aircraft is in the descent you've got your speed, your Mach, and your descent path angle, your flight path angle. We can actually lower our flight path angle to a two and a half degree descent, and uh, that's going to allow us to shallow out our descent, um, start to, to descend a little bit earlier, give us a little bit more flexibility in our descent. Uh, personally, I use that, and most people I fly with will use that. Uh, it's up to you, but if you have a strong tailwind, it's a great idea to shallow your descent out, give you a lot more versatility. Uh, the departure approach speed, um, Standard at my company to leave it at 210, 3,000, and 6 nautical miles. So what that tells us is uh, 
we have a speed limit of 210 knots within 3,000 feet AGL after takeoff or 6 nautical miles. The reason we do that is because 215 is our uh, flaps 2 speed limit, uh, our VFE for flaps 2, which we normally take off with flaps 2. This is going to prevent us, if we're in the FMS speeds mode, to, uh, from exceeding 210 and VFEing the aircraft. Um, other companies don't do that, uh, but that's just something we do here. Uh, next, into the uh, performance init page, we type our reserve fuel 2260. Takeoff fuel with a short taxi, 300 pounds, and no uh, no landing fuel. We just get rid of that for more accurate fuel. Once you're at the airport, what you have left doesn't really really matter. Uh, so if we don't want that playing around with our arrival fuel. And our contingency is our hold fuel. We'll carry, carry 700 pounds of hold fuel today. Next, we go to our uh, page 3 of 3. This is our uh, cruise information. Uh, so we see a transition altitude of 18,000 feet. A speed altitude limit 250 and 10. That's your standard 250 and 10 limitation. However, some airports like uh, Chicago, or sorry, LaGuardia have a departure where they request you to go 250 until 11. So if I wanted that to be programmed in here, I just put 250 and 11, and line selected up top. Problem solved. The aircraft's not going to accelerate above 250 until 11,000 feet. Cruising altitude today will go to 12,000 feet. Uh, we'll put that in initial cruise and in the wind altitude with an ISO deviation of plus 6 in cruise winds of 285 at 25 knots. Um, now, if we were flying the real aircraft, we'd be done right here until we had our information from our flight attendants uh, and our ACARS data. Uh, but because we don't have ACARS modeled in this aircraft, uh, we're going to have to just insert our zero fuel weight. We're taking off around 70,000 pounds. That puts us right at around 63,000 and uh, 800 pounds of zero fuel weight. Confirming it takes us right to the takeoff page. Uh, from the takeoff page we can input our uh, flap setting uh, by selecting takeoff. Go over here, here to our speeds and we're going to do a flaps 2 takeoff, 135, 139, 42, and 186 for the uh, VFS. Then we go to TRS, our thrust rating selector. Uh, the TO data select menu will go to ref ECS on. Uh, if that tells the uh, packs to remain on uh, for hot heavy, we can uh, we can reduce the or we can turn the ECS off to allow the aircraft to have that little bump of power. Sometimes it's required for performance. Uh, flex takeoff. We're really really light today, so we're going to run off relatively high flex 45 with the takeoff temperature of 13. Uh, we can change that if we need to, and then we enter it. Then. We notice on our PFD we're still in track FPA. We're going to come down here to our uh, TLA, our thrust lever angles. We don't call them throttle quadrants in the E-Jets. I'm not really 100% sure why they decided to go with that, but we don't. Uh, we hit our toga button. You'll notice we go to roll TO, and we have our command bars pitching up. This is a very important step on the aircraft, and a lot of people miss it when I see them fly on this aircraft on YouTube, uh, on, in the sim. Uh, so you got to make sure you're doing that. No takeoff. Flash. No takeoff. Break. Good to see that works. That's not turned to takeoff config. Um, okay, so the aircraft from this point of view is uh, ready to go. Uh, it's all programs. The next thing we're going to do is come up to our MCP. All the way across, we can see it's broken down into uh, your HSI selector, barrel mins, and uh, barrel selector. Uh, we're going to flick our minimums over to barrel. We leave them in barrel uh, unless we're shooting a cat to approach, then they would go to RA. But that's standard in the U.S. for my European friends uh, and the rest of the world. I'm not sure how you guys do, do that. You'll have to ask uh, some of the flies over there, but I don't. Um, we've got our flight director. We leave that alone. Uh, then we've got our lateral and our vertical modes. Lateral, we've got nav, heading, approach, and bank. And then our heading bug. We're going to bug our runway heading to uh, 010. Now, fun fact with the uh, field air products, if you hold the control key on your keyboard and scroll, it moves by increments of 10. So it's a lot quicker. Um, so that's set to our runway heading. Source selector is for whoever's flying. Since the, I'm going to fly from the left seat, I'll keep the source on the right seat. But if I were to click it, the arrow up top here would flick over to the FO side. Uh, we're going to put our speeds back into FMS speeds. This will sequence the aircraft along with our speeds to give us our, uh, our 142 for V2 climb. Uh, it'll automatically transition to the 210 limit that we uh, discussed earlier. And uh, yeah. Then we'll come over, select our initial altitude. We're, gonna, uh, we're just going to go on up to 12,000 feet. We don't have 
air traffic controller flying offline today. FPA selector knob is over here to select their flight path angle for uh, climb descents. We'll get into all those modes once we get the aircraft airborne. And then vertical speed over here, and then our FO side. Uh, so right now we're looking pretty good as in terms of our, our pre-flight. Um, MCDU looks all nice and set up. We can check our prog page to make sure our distances match what we have on our release. And then down here we notice we've got IGMF and IMKE in the uh, the tuners. That is the little A there stands for auto tune. So the uh, the nav radios are automatically tuning themselves to uh, nearby frequencies. We'll get into all that stuff once we get on the approach. That's really where that becomes uh, important. Uh, that's going to conclude our MCDU setup, and we're going to uh, move on to the next video, which we'll discuss our uh, before-start flows and uh, checklists and moving into pushback and startup.